Hey everyone, it's been a while since we last did a photo critique on this channel. We've been doing it inside the lab, which is our private online community, but now we're gonna take it to the channel and show you some photos from our members of the lab and critique them. We've been doing this for a while and we've noticed a few common mistakes, so we put together this checklist for you to critique your own photos. Let's get into it. Our first photo is from our pal Arham. Um, I love this photo uh, for a few reasons. I think it's interesting that the color of his shirt matches the neon in the background, and that's kind of um, kind of spans from. It's not just in the center of the photo; it kind of like takes you across the photo. Yeah. Um, and so your eyes are automatically drawn to where his face is in the photo, which is great work. And it provides like some interesting like uh, rim light here on him. Definitely. Along the shoulder, along the head here, so um, that helps separate. Uh, the subject a little bit more from the background. And also these colors, that kind of orangish, it's kind of salmonish, I guess. Um, it ties in well with like the, the aqua teal here in the background. Um, the other thing that I really like about this photo is that it, it's not just like a simple straight on portrait. He mm -hmm. actually shot up at, at a subject, which makes him appear like more powerful, more powerful or stronger, Yeah, um, which is a stronger image. What would you do differently here? Um, so maybe I would give him like a little bit more headroom. I feel like it's a little tight on the top. The whole photo feels like a little bit it does feel compressed. A little tight. And it is size four by five, like for Instagram. So that might, you know, that might have something to do with it. But um, yeah, just be mindful of your. Yeah, it's a little claustrophobic. I think one other thing is his expression is like a little. It's kind of bored. Yeah. Right. So um, I don't know. It's like trying to get a little bit more from your uh, subject here that makes the viewer feel something a little bit more when they look at it. Maybe something a little more striking. Um, and sometimes it's easier to uh, get more of a candid shot of a friend than it is to have them like look into the camera and pose because that's always a lot harder. Another thing is a lot of the emotion is in the eyes and so we always recommend if you're shooting somebody who doesn't, um, isn't a model and isn't really capable of doing that, um, which is how we are, um, adding sunglasses are just somehow distracting from their eyes. Having them look a little you know, less directly at the camera and maybe at something else. Yeah, that's why we put our hair over our faces a lot. Okay. Cool, good job, Arham. Yeah. All right, next is, uh, this is Danny Cutter. Love this photo, love this whole, he did a whole series on this, it's amazing. Yeah, um, really each, creative. Yeah, every photo is like, is, there's so much emotion in it and this is uh, definitely one of them. Yeah, it's an interesting juxtaposition here of like these kind of like dress shoes, dress, dress clothes in general and then being out in, in like nature. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. And um, the, the colors here are, are really nice. Like you have these earthy tones and everything just kind of ties in nicely. Yeah, so this is um, one of those photos that's harder to critique because it's more abstract. Um, so what I'm looking for in a photo like this is something that makes me like stop in my tracks and makes me feel something. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely like the sort of muted colors, but all the colors like working together um, help with that. And then just the emotion of the the subject, the fact that he's standing on a stool is striking. He's not just standing in the field. Um, it also that, like helped to put him above the horizon, so there's like no horizon going through his head. Yeah. Um, I think it's a it's a beautiful photo. I might yeah. lower my perspective as a shooter just by a, a foot or two, um, but that's just maybe something I would do. No, it's just like a preference thing. Yeah. It's awesome. I think you did a great job, and the edit is completely Solid. Yeah, it's <laughs> There's nothing that nothing that pops out as being like, oh, Offensive. that's yeah, that's too stylized or that's gonna go yeah, out of trend. A lot of people have um, trouble with grass. Either you know it's too digital looking or it's too desaturated. Too desaturated, and this is this is nice. It looks looks like, good. Yeah, yeah, nice job with the edit. This is a Neverland Mo Neverland movement. I love this photo. Really cool. Um, I love that it instantly brings like the summer vibe. Um, with the sun on her face, then she's riding a bicycle, um, nice blue sky. And uh, I think it helps that her hoodie is really bright and just like draws yeah. you in right away. And once again, you have like this orangey color with the blues right. and those, those colors always work really well together. Yeah, so the one thing that I would say um, is like, it bothered me a little bit in this photo is her left hand is completely cut off, like right at the limb. Um, and a lot of people have a hard time when we say don't cut off your subjects at the joints. So wherever it bends, like a, your wrist, the, the wrist bends. Elbow. So don't cut it off at the wrist. Hips. Yeah. Exactly. Um, 
But I don't. This is like such a cool photo that I'm like not super bothered by it. I'd be more bothered by it if it was just like a you know a standard portrait. I would say the one other thing is that um, I love that her face is in the light and then her arms in the light. Um, but the fact that her neck isn't kind of just gives it this. Um, it kind of doesn't flatter her shape. Um, it kind of gives her just like more of like a blobby. Like where the light is is the only part of her face that's like registering for us. So if maybe more of her chin and neck were in the light on this side, so maybe she turned her head a little bit the other way yeah. and you got more light on there. Um, I think that would just flatter her more, but, but great job. Awesome. All right, chasing flap. All right, we have a Nike shoe and an Apple watch. I don't have either of those. <laughs> um, okay, so the one thing I, that comes out to me right away is it feels really moody. Um, and part of that is you have like these foreboding clouds and um, the other part of that is it's very, so it's, it's like kind of underexposed and it's very muted. So yeah. um, if you look at the histogram, all, most, of the, most of what's happening is all in this, the lower half of your yeah, Instagram. Yeah, we have no whites left. A photo like this in a feed of a bunch of photos like this um, will look fine, but a photo like this standing on its own um, feels muted. It feels almost a little bit like selective color to me. Yeah, and, and we like the, the moodier look in photos, but in, when I first like pulled this up, I thought my screen was like dimmed or something, because that's like what it looks like, I guess. And I think I would rather see a little bit more in, in your, your highlights, your, your whites, um, just, to, it, just to bring a little more contrast to your image and, and help your subject and all the, the darker tones here really pop out. Yeah, his arm is a good example of um like how this can go a little bit wrong. His arm is like very gray. So we always like, when we're doing an edit, the first thing that we worry about is maintaining the skin tone. Mm -hmm. um, so if we kind of just focus that and then add it around the skin tone, you'll be on a good track. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I wanted to mention is that, you know, we always talk about like pops of color guiding the eye. Um, and since the shoe is red um, and it's not really desaturated, our eye automatically goes there, which I think is the point. The only other thing is that there's red up on top a little bit, so maybe desaturate right. that um, or crop that out or whatever. Because yeah, I kind of bounce back and forth between the two reds. So I think this would work well in like um, a lookbook for Nike's new line of, of shoes or something like that. But in general, um, I would love to see another creative way to highlight the shoe. Yeah. Um, just like when you're scrolling through your Instagram feed and you just see a picture of a shoe being tied, um, again, that's not something that's going to make you stop. and. And, and think about it, it's yeah. maybe something that you might just scroll right past. So um, bringing, like, uh, this is like a Nike gym shoe, so bringing some sort of action to it mm -hmm. might be cool. Or, um, I don't know, just giving us a reason to yeah. to stop and see it in a, in a new and fresh way. Yeah, but I like where your head's at with um, the overall tone of the image. Like, Yeah, we I, love I like, the images. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. So it's, it's a little different than maybe some other sneaker stuff. So, nice job. All right. Sun BNG. This is a photo where you have to stop and check out what's going on. Yeah. Um, so I, good job making us do that. <laughs> so um, the perspective's interesting. Yeah. That adds some interest. And then her hand so close to the camera adds more depth to the image, which is a yeah. good thing. But you also can't really tell what she's doing. It kind of looks like she's just doing this, which I assume she is. But with the depth of field, I don't know, it's, it's kind of hard to really tell what that is other than adding depth. We, um, we do this sometimes in photos, but I think it's really important to um, not shoot straight down at it because then it kind of looks like she doesn't have an arm, like it's just, or it's mm -hmm. a shorter arm or something. So if you had her maybe put her, her arm more, you know, behind her or more forward, um, then you can actually see what's going yeah. on. Um, and maybe even crop in more closely on it. Um, one thing I do like about this, about this photo though is um, the hula hoop or whatever's on the ground um, is working to frame her. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's not perfectly centered. So it's kind of like your eyes should be over here, um, which is great. And then she's like um, laying on grass, which is this cool texture behind her too, which is. Yeah, it's cool. You have some sub framing going on with the, the hands and kind of like even the collar here, it's framing her face. Yeah. And then outside of that, you have the hula hoop framing that. So um, I think that you have a lot of visual interest going on. Yeah. Um, it does maybe seem over cl clarified um, or like over sharpened a little bit. Yeah. Um, so it, like the grass is super sharp, which that's not really the focus, the focal point here. Watch your clarity again. And if it's not clarity, when you sharpen, try masking 
um, your photo. So that way it only sharpens the most in yeah. focus parts. All right, you can do it like that or you could also use an adjustment brush and um, paint over the face and just turn sharpening up a little bit and then you don't have to um, worry about the grass getting over sharpened. How do you feel about the black and white edit? I think it's okay. I, I think color would be interesting as, to see as well because um, black and white, it, I think it works better if the background is more minimal mm -hmm. um, because right now the subject doesn't pop out as right, much right, as right. if it was in color. I yeah, think. the background is kind of overpowering her because mm -hmm. it's so much darker and- There's a lot of contrast. Yeah, and a lot of stuff, stuff going, going on. on. Yeah. So maybe- Yeah, I would like to see this in color. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, nice job. Okay, this, um, you mentioned you were getting used to your DSLR, used to shooting on a phone, um, and that you cropped the heads off because their shadows didn't really have heads. This so that's like a really artistic take on uh, take on that, which is really cool. Yeah, this is an amazing photo, and this is some, uh, this is one that you might, um, you know, if you accidentally snapped it, you might, you know, toss it aside. But when you stop and look at it, it's amazing. I love all of the shapes that you captured. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about capturing emotion in an image, and um, the fact that they're all sort of walking away, the fact that they don't have heads, the fact that they all have these shadows, and they kind of go in this pattern, that all evokes this feeling. Yep. Um, I love the I love that like you said the pattern and then also like the, the the tiles on the ground have a pattern and just like the framing and everything it really adds to the composition of the photo. Yeah, I, this is one that's harder to critique because it's more abstract, um, but I love this image. Maybe um, the the red shirt is drawing my eye um, more than and the red shirt and the blue pants over in the corner. This are, could be interesting to see in black and white. That's what I was this gonna say. Like, yeah. It might be better to put this in black and white so that um, it's kind of just a repeating pattern instead of um, you know one one person overshadowing another person. Yeah, not gonna look good on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when you add it on a JPEG. Okay, so um, the good news is you can always learn the technical aspects of your DSLR, and as you own it longer and shoot more with it, you'll get really good at that. Uh, and you already have the hard part down, which is that creative eye, which we've seen over and over again with your work. So nice job. Yeah, good job. All right, Gwen. Cool. Okay, wait. What's going down in the corner? Oh, I didn't even notice that person at first. Okay, so we have two people on the right. We have a plane on the left. Let's see, let me look at this. Oh, okay, we have a bunch of birds. Oh, yeah. So first of all, the, the layered rock is definitely the highlight of the photo here because it's really striking. And the color palettes. Everything yeah. is, you know, on the spectrum from this like blue to red, and then there's like some dark in the, in the outfits yeah. that the people are wearing. But yeah, beautiful color palette. And um, you mentioned that you broke composition rules on purpose when doing that, and that's, that's what um, it's all about is intention. So yeah. if you intend to break rules, good. So one thing I guess with, with uh, this subject down here, having her looking this way, right at the edge of the frame and not having any looking room, gives it more of a, a Yeah, it always feels, feeling, yeah, right? like tight or oh, like it's kind of like anxiety inducing. Yeah. Um, which is kind of, um, not the vibe that she's giving me. She's like yeah. laughing yeah, and it seems like she's say. having a good time. Um, and so, you know, you want to you want to intentionally break rules um, when it when it means something. Like if mm -hmm. she, if she had like a like a nervous look on her face yeah. and she was like cropped into that side of the frame, I as a viewer would be like, what's happening beyond that frame? That would like that would you know strike yep. my make you know my curiosity, but. And then, uh, okay, this subject here, we have a kid. He looks like he's wearing a suit, which it'd be awesome. actually really cool to see, like, have him. Just this as a photo right here is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's really that. cool. Um, I like it, like, split, like, put the, um, put the line right in the middle of the photo. Yeah, that's interesting. I love that. So, yeah, in general, like, we would have, if we had full control over the shot, Usually we'd be, be like, oh, bring, you know, have this subject come out closer to the edge so like their feet and legs aren't hidden. Um, and, and in this case, I, it, it adds a little bit of intrigue to the photo. Um, but I, I would also like to see more of it because that, that kid seems like he could be the highlight of the photo. So what I would do differently is the subject in the front, it was very hard to like immediately see what was going on. Um, just because she's wearing such dark clothes and the rock is dark, you can just kind of see her arm. Um, I thought maybe like something was falling there. Um, so, you know, maybe, you know, using intentionality to make her pop from this, you know, from the background or not having her 
in there. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I think I would have liked, you know, breaking those composition rules better if there was still some sort of balance in the photo. Mm -hmm. Like if he was up here and she was over on the left. Um, You know, they they don't have to be in thirds. They could still be on the edges, Mm -hmm. but it it would feel more balanced. balanced, yeah. Um, Another thing, we, I mean, while we love the layered rock, I mean, I think I would love to see like a horizontal of just like this scene too, because I think that is also really interesting. Yeah, that looks like a movie I probably would be afraid of. <laughs> I think that looks so cool right there. Yeah. So you obviously have um, a really good eye. So really good job with this. Um, let's move on. Oh, this is tight. Uh, once, yeah, once again, this kind of feel, uh, this is such an overused word, it doesn't mean anything anymore, but it feels really cinematic. Um, and um, the, the, the colors that we have going on here, it's, it's, it's more muted and, and less like bright and poppy. And I really like that I because love, it matches the style, the, the mood of the photo. Yeah, so right away, something that adds to the mood is just um, the expression that you, you got from your model. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And the stripes in her pants, and this is such like a simple thing, maybe obvious, but I'll just say it anyway. Um, the fact that they um, are vertical, it's leading your eye up to um, what's the subject of the photo, which is... Um, this yep. mood, this emotion in her and face. And I love the movement in the jacket like that. Yep. The wind, or if she did it herself, she's just holding it out. I mean, that, that makes it feel blustery and Yeah, and cold, yeah. Kind of. Okay, so we do have the f- shoes cut off. I don't super care. I mean, it's not at like the ankle really. Like I think um, it's kind of like the middle of the leg here. Well, that's like another like um, good example of when you can break a rule Mm -hmm. Um, because when limbs are cut off um, it gives you this like feeling of you know it's not right um, which is kind of like everything else in this photo is giving me that vibe too so um, breaking rules like that uh, this is another one where if you composed it um, where she's not in the center or not a third if she's like really close to like the edge of the frame I'm okay with that Mm -hmm. because um, that's also helping to evoke this like moodiness. One thing that like I might personally do differently is her nose doesn't end, you know, her hands covering that and then so her finger goes off of there. So like it looks a little weird to me. So I would personally maybe want her hand covering like the entirety of her nose or low enough where you see the rest of the nose. If that makes sense, it just looks a little strange right here. That's all. It catches my eye and distracts me. But that could just be a me thing. Yeah, I'm not super offended by okay. it, but maybe that's maybe that's just a me thing. It's in the eye but, of the beholder. Yeah, but um, this is another one where um, this is what I thought you were gonna say. The um, the arm is like pointing directly at the camera, which is just like seems like there's just like a hand attached here. Um, so you know, just slightly moving like it accentuate over. Accentuate the angles, kind of. Yeah, just um, let us know that there's more there. It's it's like a little dark, right? It's it like is. A, it little, is a little a little dark. Um, it seems like you properly exposed it and then brought it down in post. Yeah, we just don't. On the highlights. We're not. We don't super mind uh, uh, darker photos, but you know, consider bumping the exposure maybe a tad. Martin, cool. So first of all, you have beautiful light right here. Kind of fill light here in your subject. It's mm-hmm. gorgeous. Um, so kind that looks like great. The yellow blue theme again. Yeah. Sorry to. It's in nature, so works. you know we're gonna see it a lot. Yeah. Well, um, even like um, having him in a blue shirt helps with that too. I think. Okay. So w- what I would say pops out right now is the composition um, as being um, that that could be improved because we have yeah. a lot of like negative space up here. And, and we it's don't very see bottom heavy. Yeah, we don't see like the rest of him. And this is like kind of I wanna say wasted space, but I think the composition would feel more balanced if uh, he was higher in the frame. We got you know, that's like his elbow, which you kinda of wanna avoid cutting off at. Yeah, um, and he doesn't even really have a right arm. Yeah, so we can get more of your subject and less of this like kind of nothing of the background where it's just like kinda of dark. You know, we know it's trees and nature, so we don't need to see so much of that, I don't think. And it would just balance out the composition more. Um, this is um, like a preference thing maybe, but uh, you have all this beautiful light um, pouring on his face and it's just like highlighting his ear and his, the side of his glasses. Um, and so you could have used this as an opportunity to have him maybe look the other way and like highlight maybe some more of a subject, which is his face. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. you're on the right track. I love like all of the, the tones in this. Yeah. The way that they're all working together. The edit is solid, of course. 
All right, Bradley Adams. This is cool. I love ping pong. <laughs> or table tennis, if you prefer. This is, okay, so this is, a, again, um, a bit of a juxtaposition with kind of man-made ping pong paddles out in nature with no ping pong table. Yeah. And in, in these kind of like fat, high fashion or, you know, uh, outfits that don't really connect with the ping pong paddles, which makes it interesting. I have so much I want to say about this. Go for I'm it. I'm just gonna go through a list. Okay, um, so we talk a lot about like color, um, using pops of color to draw the eye. And this is such like a muted photo, except for the um, ping pong paddles, which are um, this bright red, you know, juxtaposed against this like muted palette. Um, so our eyes go right there. Um, so right away, um, you're drawing interest. Second thing is that I love the theme of like doubles in this photo. There's two girls holding a paddle, they each have a paddle, they're in between these two trees. Um, it almost, it's, it's slightly off center, but almost if you like shifted them over a little bit, um, if you split down the middle, it's like a mirror image of the other side, which is amazing. Um, it's, that's just, you know, serves to create interest. I love that you chose to shoot it from down, so we have this like foreground yep. element from the grass, right um, which is framing them on the bottom and, you know, helping uh, the trees are framing them on the sides, so it's like this feeling of like subframing. Yeah, really well done. Yeah, so my only two, do you have any other compliments that I missed? No, you, you did a great job. So the thing that I might um, w watch out for in the future is um, the girl on the left, you know, stage right or whatever. She has a tree coming out of her head. Um, yep. So just like shifting her over a little bit, shifting yourself over, you can avoid that. Yeah. And then the other thing is the grass is getting like a little bit gray. The greens are getting a little gray. Yep. Um, so just watch that when you're editing. Yeah, I think the edit's really nice in general. Yeah, the it's skin just, tones are great. Yeah. It's just, just the grass is getting a, a little bit like um, unnatural looking. So all you gotta do, if, the, thick, if your hue is over to the blues, which I think it is, bring it back over here. And then um, you can play around with luminance too, but um, you can kind of boost that a little bit there. This will look better when you're doing it to a raw image. Yeah, of course. I feel like I have to say that every time. Great job. Rachel, I'm so happy to be standing here with you today, surrounded by all of our friends. Daniel, we've been together for eight years, through seven different apartments and four different websites all of which were hosted by Squarespace's easy to use all-in-one platform. You're so beautiful inside and out, just like Squarespace's designer templates. You've always been there for me, day and night, just like Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support. I'm so glad I made my next move with Squarespace and you. I love you both so much. Thanks to everyone who submitted photos. Yeah. We uh, hope you guys were able to learn something from watching us critique these photos. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.